Hello, welcome to a book obsession. I'm Ashley Gunn and I want to share with you guys a series that I'm reading right now. So usually when I do reviews, I do them over a complete series and this will be the very first time that I'm breaking it up book by book. This will be Marissa Meyer's The Lunar Chronicles and so far I've read Cinder and Scarlet. I'm almost done with Crest right now. I believe that this series is an ongoing series and I think that one comes out actually next month. So I actually, so far, I'm, I'm absolutely enjoying the series. Really, I picked it up because of that cover. It's an incredible cover. And it surprised me. I loved every bit of it, so I want to share it with you guys. Uh, before I go on, I just want to say that so far, this has been a clean series. There's no cussing and there's no sex scenes. And I was really excited about that because when I've read this much, I've really enjoyed it as an adult. So. I was like, this will be perfect for me to read with my daughter when she gets to like a junior high age. It's really, it's a great series. So, so far, Cinder is a cyborg and she lives in this universe where there's androids. Those are robots, they're not self-aware or anything like that. You have cyborgs, which are people that for one reason or another had technology put in them, usually for medical purposes. And then you have humans, which are humans. <laughs> and then you have lunars, and those are people who after we colonize the moon, uh, have had genetic mutation, just rather it's the atmosphere. I don't think anyone really knows how it happened, but now they have the ability to control bioelectricity. They almost, they know that they're, they're more powerful. And so it creates this tug of war between the earth and the moon where it's a power struggle. The entire moon is ruled by one queen and that definitely gives you that fairy tale vibe. So Cinder is gonna be based off of Cinderella and Marissa Myers does an amazing job of just pulling the important parts of Cinderella out. And then in my personal opinion, she gives them this like steampunk twist to them. You'll get that, you'll definitely get that vibe. If you read the very first line of Cinder, you're gonna get that steampunk vibe, at least for me I did. Um, it starts with her tightening a screw in her ankle and the description that Marissa gives of just the screw itself really does give you an idea of how she, how descriptive she is through the entire series. It is really, really great. So you have Cinder and like I said, Cyborg and then the Cinderella part comes where she's adopted by a man who passes away and is left to what would technically be her stepmother. Her stepmother has two daughters. Okay, so though she is technically the stepmom, like I said, because Cinder is a cyborg, she has to have somebody as her legal guardian unless the legal guardian signs paperwork to like free her. I'm not really clear on why that is. I just know that there are rules and I wasn't there for the vote. So unfortunately, this is the way her life is. Uh, so Cinder is stuck under her stepmother's thumb as basically a slave. She works and the mother and the sisters don't. One day at work, she meets Prince Kai, which is where you get that royal prince vibe from. And Prince Kai is gonna be in the book, especially towards the end. Cinder's enamored with him right away. And so is pretty much everyone. You know, just like in Cinderella, the entire kingdom is just in love with this prince. So that's really kind of, you definitely get that fairy tale vibe. The actual plot here is that Cinder is, her town, has been ravished by a plague and not just her town pretty much the entire earth has i don't want to spoil anything so i'm gonna this may not come out the way i want it to i'll just say this cinder doesn't really have a choice in the beginning but then eventually does get a choice to help find a cure for the plague and that's where she finds her destiny in so she's helping try and find the, the cure for this plague and she finds out a lot about stuff that she didn't know before about herself and about the situation and and pretty much everything and so that is going to be the kickoff for this series. You're essentially going to have Cinder be the main person and she's going to travel from this book to Red Riding Hood book, Scarlet, and then into Crest. I could say with, uh, with real certainty that she will continue through all of the books. So I couldn't recommend it enough, especially for fantasy books. And truthfully, I'm gonna tell you this. If you are one of those people who read fantasy books, but they're usually really erotic, I don't miss it at all. I've read a lot of erotic fantasy series before and I don't miss it one single bit. I think Marissa Myers does an incredible job making the books feel complete, making you feel complete. Uh, although she does leave them at cliffhangers, which does annoy some people at 11 o'clock at night when they finish Cinder and don't have Scarlet yet. 
So that would be my criticism is that I didn't know it was a cliffhanger and so I wasn't prepared and I would have liked to have been. All right, if you like this review, then go ahead and like this review. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, as always, put that in the comments section. And then if you want to get my videos every week, then go ahead and subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me.